The inception of American paper money traces back to 1775, when Congress issued the first notes, known as continental currency, to finance the Revolutionary War. However, these notes depreciated significantly due to a lack of solid backing and severe counterfeiting. Since then, U.S. banknotes have come a long way in terms of design and security to ensure unparalleled authenticity. Be it complex holographic features, watermarks, or specialized ink, the Federal Reserve has left no stone unturned to eliminate the risk of imitations. So, how are U.S. banknotes made today? Let's find out. Even though we call it paper money, there's actually no wood pulp involved. Instead, it's a blend of 25% linen and 75% cotton, made specifically for the Bureau of Engraving and Printing by Crane Currency in Dalton, Massachusetts, and it's illegal for anyone else to possess. Crane Currency has been making this unique blend for well over a century and has been the only manufacturer since the beginning of the Federal Reserve Note system. This is also where we see the first of the numerous security features used in the modern day. Within the paper, minuscule red and blue dyed fibers are distributed at random. No two bills will have the same pattern. In addition, higher denominations will also have watermarks embedded, meaning that when the bills are held up to light, a faint simplified rendition of the main portrait will appear. Another feature reserved for notes $5 and up is a transparent security thread woven vertically into the paper. These threads have text describing the denomination only visible under light, much like the watermarks. And under UV light, the threads will glow different colors. For instance, a $5 bill's thread will glow blue, and a $10 bill's thread will glow orange. The printing plates that bear the banknote designs start with ideas and sketches from artists who work together with the engravers who will create the final plate. Next, the skilled engravers intricately etch the design by hand using an engraving pen called a pantograph, painstakingly replicating the design onto a printing template called a master or steel die. This entire process can take up days to complete. However, these dies are not just ordinary steel plates. They are chrome-plated to endure the immense pressure and precision required for printing. These plates are also made to integrate another security feature called microprinting. Every part of the design, from the portrait on the front and the vignette on the back, along with all the hand lettering and embellishment, are composed of minuscule lines and dots. Some of these lines and dots depict microscopic text strategically placed across the bill. For example, taking a closer look at a $100 bill will reveal the phrase the United States of America printed along Benjamin Franklin's collar and USA at the bottom of his portrait. A low-quality counterfeit would render these words illegible. The first step for all denominations of $5 and greater is a process known as offset printing. This is where the color is added. During offset printing, detailed multicolored background images and designs are accurately printed on both sides of the bill simultaneously using special ink. To do this, the ink is first transferred from engraving plates to soft rubber blankets and finally onto the paper. The machines responsible for this are enormous. Each one is more than 50 feet long and weighs in at over 70 tons. They operate at breakneck speeds, too capable of printing up to 10,000 sheets an hour. The press operators keep a close eye on these machines and their results. In addition to automated checks done by computers, they will pull a sheet out after every 500 prints to inspect them manually. Steel plate printing, also known as intaglio printing, is the first step for $1 bills and the second step after offset printing for all other denominations. At this stage, intricate designs such as portrait, lettering, numerals, and scroll work are added to the paper, which are unique to each denomination. This is where the intricate engraving plates mentioned earlier come into use. Specialized ink is applied to these metal plates, where it sinks into the engraved recesses. The excess ink is wiped off before the plates are pressed against the substrate, and enormous pressure is applied to bond the ink to the paper. Unlike the prints that come out of a copier, the special ink dries with a slightly raised texture, often compared to a very fine sandpaper. 
This feature is very difficult to replicate without the unique machinery used by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. The printing presses used for intaglio printing have a similar speed to the offset printers, putting out 10,000 sheets an hour, and when they're applying ink to the bills, they use up to 20 tons of pressure. Unlike offset printing, intaglio printers can only apply a single color at a time and must patiently allow three days for the ink to dry. At any given moment in one of the printing facilities, up to $300 million can be in production, depending, of course, on the denomination. Numbering is the last step in the printing process, a trip through a letterpress printing machine. This takes care of a few small but very important details. Serial numbers and the Department of Treasury's seal, printed in green and black, and the Federal Reserve seal and identification numbers. At this point, yet another security feature will also be added – color-shifting ink on bills $10 and up. The number in the lower right on the portrait side is printed in ink that shifts from copper to green, depending on the angle it's viewed. After the long journey of printing, the bills go through a final rigorous inspection. OCIS, the Offline Currency Inspection System, is a high-tech, state-of-the-art machine utilizing cameras integrated with custom-built software to inspect sheets at a speed of 2.5 sheets per second. It can analyze both sides of the sheet at once, able to pick up defects and errors with incredible precision and speed. Before being destroyed, any sheets deemed defective by OCIS will be inspected one last time. And if there are individual notes on a sheet that are fit for circulation, they'll be recovered and processed separately. After successful inspection, the sheets are fed through a system of guillotines and are cut horizontally, then vertically, to meet specific dimensions of approximately 2.61 inches in width and 6.14 inches in length. This precise cutting transforms the sheets into neatly stacked individual notes, which are then wrapped with bands declaring their denomination, typically containing 100 notes per stack. These stacks are then shrink-wrapped into bundles, and then four of those bundles are wrapped together, once more, into a package containing 4,000 bills. Four of these bricks are packaged together on a skid, which carries a total of 16,000 notes, and that skid is then stored in a Federal Reserve vault, awaiting the day they enter circulation. Remarkably, a single skid can contain up to $64 million, provided they are all $100 bills. When it comes time for these bills to enter circulation, security is of the utmost concern. The bills are loaded into armored trucks and sometimes escorted for their journey from the printing facility to Federal Reserve banks. These trucks travel on a precise schedule, with every mile of their journey planned and accounted for. Once the trucks reach their destination, Federal Reserve banks will receive a specific allotment of money, calculated based on supply and demand. The federal banks are then responsible for further distribution to commercial banks and eventually into your hands, circulating throughout the financial system. And that's the entire journey of U.S. banknotes. Before we wrap up, here's a fun fact. Did you know that it costs 2.8 to 8.6 cents to produce each note? The cost varies depending on the denomination. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Until next time, stay curious. And don't forget to subscribe to Made Mastery for more fascinating content. Thanks for watching.